Uh, one of your recent large projects, I guess, is this Zephyr computer, That's right? right? And I think uh, we have a tape of that. Something. Okay. I think uh, our illustrious director here, uh, Mr. Fry, has that and can roll it in. And uh, he uh, he showed me. Oh well, here's okay. the machine oh, yeah, room. Oh yeah, some machine room. Okay, and yeah. there's a Plato terminal, plasma panel, and a bunch of stuff, right? Yeah, there's a bunch of support computers that handle the disk system and, and talk the, to the uh, talk to the satellite that's communication system. The front end computer there, right? The sun. Right, the console there. Console, and this is uh, BioComputers, our director. Right, and this is this is the Zephyr computer. He's opening up a CPU now that's in this box. Uh huh. This is a computer built with 100 KECL, has a 100 megahertz uh, clock rate. 100 megahertz. Right, so it's a it's a fast computer. And this thing I hear performs like an 855. Well, I don't know the <laughs> CDC yeah. numbers that well. This was built uh, to replace machines that ran Plato in the past. This uh -huh. is called Nova Net. How now. come it's got jumper cables in there? Uh, those are power cables. They're going around <laughs> the box. So, and these are the drawings. We uh, yeah, still have a drawings. draftsman. And you got lots of these boxes. That's right. There's, it uh, says Nova Net back the, there. The one that says Nova Net is a memory box. It's got uh, the memory capacity. There's 512 megabytes of RAM. Then you got communication stuff, huh? Right. And these are things, uh, communications racks which are mostly empty now because of the new communications equipment we have is much more compact than the older. Oh, I see. So these are like uh, telephone lines coming here and modems and... That's right. That's and, right. And we also have T1 lines going out of the place, so it turns out it's, it's very efficient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take lots of equipment. Well, that's great. So um, this computer then, uh, how many users are on this? on this Zephyr computer? Well, it's designed to handle 3,000 simultaneous users. Now, there's a bunch more connected. How many? 3,000? 3, 3,000. So it's, it's different than most mainframe computers. Usually, you have computers that are uh, built to, say, do uh, fast vector arithmetic or something. Yeah, yeah. And this one's built to handle lots of users very quickly. And uh, we had a previous system which ran in control data cybers. So we have lots and lots of statistics. We have over 10 years of very good statistics about what operations were used a lot in the cyber, and when uh -huh. this was designed, we optimized those. So, what, so, um, so you guys have a complete, you have the floating point and everything for the cyber? We have unit? everything there. Uh, the floating point unit is uh, painstakingly made the same as a cyber. That's one of the uh, units that I uh, designed. It was, of course, a big project that lots of people worked with. Uh -huh. I led the hardware group, uh, so I led the group that built the uh, computer. I got all my expertise from building music synthesizers for, well, signal processors. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. before, uh, so now the computer this. was designed uh, originally by, by it, Don Lee, is right? right? The, the basic uh, sketch of it was done by Don Lee, who is uh, a software yeah. uh, we, guy. Well, he's like the, one of the first programmers ever. We'd really like to get him on the show, but he's too shy. He won't he's come on. He's too shy. Well, he's, he's very good. He picked up a hardware book one day, and he said, wow, well, you know, it looks like I could design a cyber with this. <laughs> and uh, since it's a risk machine, uh, it, he really got far with it. Now, he didn't know all the details of the hardware, but he got the basic layout done. A lot of very important uh, decisions were made. Uh -huh, uh -huh. For instance, having duplicate, duplicate copies of the register set so that there's one complete copy for each bus. Well, who did all that things. wiring? Uh, the wiring was done by machine. It was done by robot, and we just did the connect uh, the corrections. And you uh, used somebody's CAD package then to um, no, to no, that was again the Don Lee. When he sat down and looked at his book, he also figured out uh, how to make a CAD package. His CAD package is quite amazing. It's it's really uh, very versatile. Uh, the only part of the process it doesn't do is it doesn't draw the drawings. Oh, okay. uh, so we do have drawings. We have a draftsman. We do that very old style. Well, that's good. Uh, I like that. But the that. CAD package is, is extremely general. And the draftsman is also extremely general. Uh, we give very <laughs> high level commands to the draftsman, and he uh, does a great job uh -huh. at implementing uh -huh. them. So um, what did he build this uh, CAD package out of? It was built out of a compass assembler. It turns out that CDC had a, uh, has a very... Uh, uh, versatile and very general uh, assembler with very, very strong macro capabilities. In fact, they're so strong that he completely redesigned the thing instead of, uh, or, or, or wrote, wrote macros so that instead of assembling compass, it's instead uh, assembling, assembling connection a, lists. A wire list and, and instructions right. to the robots to wire. And then, yeah, and then Kevin Nomura also did a, a thesis on the optimization program because the, wi the wiring is done optimally. But it's, it's amazing. So this machine is like uh, the ones that they have at Livermore and all the big computing facilities, only it's... How much does it cost? Is it well, we don't we don't have many cost overruns. Uh, I don't know if you can tell from looking at the machine uh, at the machine room, but uh, uh, we do work within a budget. And this machine, uh, we had one board we had to return, so I guess we went something on the order of six thousand dollars of wasted money. Other than that, mm -hmm. everything we built is operational and uh, well, that's, and works. That's uh, kind of amazing. Uh, I can't imagine how you can get uh, that much performance. Well, we're cheaper. very proud of it. It's tough uh, in a university environment to actually build a machine 
and really get it out and uh, really make it work. What is the performance exactly? How do you how do you measure it? Well, it, it, we measure it in terms of how Plato performs and how many users we can run at, at good performance. Uh, so it, it's very specifically made for this task. So and uh, so it, it, I, I guess it's very hard for me. We don't have general performance benchmarks. So what is Plato exactly? Uh, it's a multi-user system. It uses a central computer now. You can mm -hmm. also download into your terminal, and uh, so people use IBM PCs and Macintoshes nowadays. I see. So it's like Prodigy, only. Well, well, there's also a lot of uh, central system execution. I mean, you have this big, powerful system in the center. And one of the reasons we designed this computer is that there's millions and millions of man hours of courseware there. Millions of man hours. So sure. you could, I could, like, learn how to read or learn how to sure. do this is, this nuclear system, physics. Could I learn? Yeah, you could learn all sorts how of about, things. How about electronic music? Uh, there's all sorts of things. In fact, the programs we showed today were all started uh, on that system. In uh -huh. fact, still exist and uh -huh. are used uh -huh. on that system. We use both uh, the Macintosh and uh, and the central system. Well, that's great. So, um, and you can run 3,000 users off of those boxes. Well, so far we haven't done that yet, but uh, it looks, the performance looks good. And then the idea is that we build several of the systems. Uh, since they're centralized, all at one location, uh, they can be networked very easily. The central computers I can. I see. And also, then, I guess that means you don't have to make backups. The user doesn't have to be as right. a system programmer. Right. The users have the to know very little. Many of these, stuff. for instance, the teachers at inner city schools have other things to worry about than learning right. to use the computer. Well, I'm really glad you could find time to come by, Lip Holden. Okay. Congratulations Thanks. on your new marriage. And tune in again next week for High Tech Heroes. Till then, au revoir. Thank you for joining us this week for High Tech Heroes. Be sure to watch High Tech Heroes again next week when we will bring you more entertaining information about the people and ideas behind the scenes in high tech industry. And now, this is your announcer, Margie Foote, wishing you the best of luck and a pleasant week. Au revoir. This episode of High Tech Heroes has been made possible in part by grants from Linksys Incorporated of Lafayette, Indiana, Kinetic Microscience of San Jose, California, Behind the Scenes Software Incorporated of West Lafayette, Indiana. and Cybernetic Arts of Sunnyvale, California. <laughs>